I'm just so grateful that the Lord has blessed us today, his holy presence. Uh, do you feel his presence this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. I'm just grateful the Lord shows himself and lets us know that his power is still abounding. And I'm thankful today to give you this holy word of God today. It's good to know that the Lord blesses you with messages that, that affects all of us. And I want you to know today this is a message that I want you to take, take home with you. It's called Bearing Fruit Brings Advantages and Blessings. And if you're watching today on myglantonics.org or if you're live streaming this, this message goes out to you wherever you are in this world, in this nation it goes out to you too. And I'm thankful today that you have blessed us. Bearing fruit brings advantages and blessings. We're going to be in John 15, verses 1 through 17. And even through this pandemic and anything that we're going through with the world, Texas and all over this world, I want to still ask you, are you Bearing fruit. You know, even in a time that we're in, we need to be bearing fruit. It is a calling of God for his children. And he states it very clearly in John 15, verse 16. He said, you did not choose me, but I, choose, I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give. Now let me read John chapter 15, verses 1 through 17. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear in it, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You're already clean because of your word, which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as in the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so will you be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do, <laughs> if you do. <clears throat> Whatever I command you, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask of the father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Dear Jesus, we thank you this morning for your blessings, and thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies, Father. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that's in this house today, Father. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, because you're so great, kind, and merciful. You have given us your, pre your precious spirit, and Lord, we thank you that we still feel your holy presence Thank you for this word that we're about to receive. And thank you for anointing these lips of clay to be inspired by your word. And as I preach to your word, Lord, anoint me and anoint this church. Those who are watching and hearing in my presence, I pray that you would encourage them today. Thank you. 
In your holy, precious name, we give you a sweet, sweet honor and praise, Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Again, if you're under the sound of my voice today, are you bearing fruit? You know, the vine is an Old Testament figure that was used to represent the people of Israel. And in this scripture, Jesus is telling those who, who will listen that he is the true vine, the man of God's right hand. And Jesus is now, he's using this illustration to show that everyone who accepts God through him becomes a part of the vine. Isn't that awesome news? When we accept Jesus as our personal Savior and begin a personal relationship with God through Jesus, we become a part of the true vine. See, the basic truth of this chapter is that a Christian cannot bear fruit unless they have an abiding relationship with the true vine, which is Jesus Christ. And that makes a relationship with Christ very important. And the key word here is abiding. Someone say abiding. To abide in something means to stand fast or to remain or to stay. There is no time like the present that we need to stay connected with our Savior Jesus, especially in these unprecedented times of uncertainty. Do you agree with that? Amen. We need to be in a continuous relationship with God through Christ. And we can't go out and live like the world six days a week and give God one day and continue to be expect to be abiding in the vine. If we're living that way, then we're not abiding in the vine. We are abiding in the world. The writer of Hebrews, he says in Hebrews chapter 10, 26 through 27, he says, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. There are many benefits to abiding in the vine. Having our prayers answered, bearing much fruit and eternal life in Christ in heaven. So we need to figure what it means to abide in the vine so, so that we can be assured that we are not in spiritual fatigue. So that we can be assured that we are bearing fruit, having our prayers answered and having a place in heaven. I know I have a place in heaven. How about you? Who knows they have a place in heaven today? Hallelujah. So what does it mean to abide in the vine? A vine branch is, is lifeless and useless unless it remains attached to the vine. Inside the vine is a living sap that flows throughout the vine into each of the branches. Yeah. Enabling each branch to produce fruit. And for us to abide in the vine means that we're going to be people who are depending upon Christ and who are allowing the power of the Holy Spirit of Christ to flow through us and in us. Abiding in the vine means that we are living our lives with the presence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in us. It is his presence, it is in his presence in our lives that drives our desire to be more like Christ. And the more we are like Christ, the more fruit we are going to bear, and the more prayers we're going to see answered. Who's looking for some answered prayers today? I am. And you know, many people try to be good, honest people who do what's right. But, you know, Jesus says that the only way to live a truly good life is to stay close to him. Like a branch attached to the vine. Apart from Christ, our efforts are unfruitful. Are you receiving the nourishment of life that is offered by Christ today? The vine. If not, you're missing a special gift he has for you. 
And you know, abiding in the vine means that we have an ongoing relationship with God through Christ Jesus, that, and that relationship is the most important thing in our lives today. This means that God is everything, and everything else follows. Now, what does it mean to bear fruit? We're talking about bearing fruit today also. It says the fruit that is mentioned here is a result of God's love in the life of the believer. God so loved, loved us, and the fruit of his love was Jesus coming to earth and dying on the cross and then being raised from the grave so that we could have everlasting life. Because God so loved us so much, we love him. And when we love God, the Bible clearly teaches us that we should love others. So our love brings forth actions. We do good things for others. We help them. We support them. We build them up. And we share the love of God with them so that they too will become children of God. How many know we can't keep this all to ourselves? We need to make sure that the world knows because I want them to see the blessings and the richness and the goodness of eternal life when we get to heaven. And the final result of this kind of love is changed lives. We're changing because we are becoming more like Christ. And we want to see fruit produced in our lives. Then, and, and you know, I, I, let me put it this way. I'm so happy this morning to give you this here. Hallelujah. You know, if we want to see fruit produced in our lives, then we must abide in him. The more we abide in him, the more we become like him. The more we become like him, the more fruit we bear. You know, there is a natural development in the scripture in regards to bearing fruit. You know, it says that we will bear fruit. And then it says we will bear more fruit. And then lastly, it says we will bear much fruit. And when a vine produces much fruit, God is glorified. For the daily he sent the sunshine and the rain to make the crops grow. And constantly he nurtured each tiny plant and prepared it to blossom. What a moment of glory, hallelujah, for the Lord of harvest. When the harvest is brought into the barns, matured and ready to use. He made it all happen. And this farming likeness of analogy shows that God, how God is glorified when people come into the right relationship with him and begin to bear much fruit in their lives. You know, people who are not bearing fruit in their lives are people who are not living their lives for Jesus. And they are not allowing or not following the example of his living of the word. Not only are they not bearing fruit, and let me put this in a kindful way here, but their prayers are not being answered. And even worse, they have no assurance of eternal life in heaven. What a state. The person who is becoming more like Jesus needs very little motivation to bear fruit because they are living out life for who they are in Christ Jesus. You know, when you become more like Jesus, you want to witness to more people and win souls for God. Who want to win some souls for God? When you become more like Jesus, you pray and seek Jesus more. When you become more like Jesus, you'll see your attitude change. When you become more like Jesus, you will treat people more like Jesus did. And when you become more like Jesus, your conversation or discussions with people will sound more like the conversation Jesus had with others. You know, we need to become one in Christ and dwell with him, and we need to enter in his presence to become more like him. And when we do enter his presence, we can break out of the natural and break into the supernatural. And we can begin to see great and marvelous things happen for the kingdom of God. 
See, the Lord delights in that. So, so, so how are you going to remain in the vine? It's so easy. Jesus showed his love for God, and he remained in God by doing what he owed, was obedient to God. Jesus tells us in John chapter 15, 9 and 10, he says, As the Father loved me, I also love you. Abide in my love. And if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. You know, accepting God's word. I thank you, Lord, for this. He just give this to me. Accepting God's word and following the word of, of God's word is the key to abiding in the vine. You know, his word has the, the, the power to renew our minds. And when we follow the word, it, it, it determines our actions and our attitudes. And you know, if we accept the word of God and follow it, our identity changes. Our, our, our identity changes and our, our destiny changes. Thank you, Lord. And our lifestyle changes. And I don't mean just reading the Word and studying the Word. You know, we can say that we study the, the Word, but do you accept the Word as your standard of living? Are you putting the Word of God into action? Or in other words, are you practicing the word of the Lord in your life? Are you believing and having faith and confidence in the scriptures that you read? Remember, Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This word guides us and it will keep us if we abide in the holy words of God. Because when we are abiding in the word, meaning living in the word, we are abiding in Christ Jesus. Because the beloved disciple John wrote in gospel, John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And you know, as a pastor, I, I, I will continue to push and jam this word down your minds and souls as much as I can. You know, because I want you to get spiritually fat in the scriptures of the Lord. We do this on Sunday. We do this on Wednesday nights. We go by the scriptures word by word, verse by verse. And I try to jam it down your throat to let you know that every word of God is true. You all believe that today. Every word of God is true. God's word changes everything. And it is the key to abiding in the vine. And there are other benefits of abiding in the vine. You know, the first we were talking about bearing fruit and more fruit, much fruit. And then this second benefit in the vine is answered prayer. You know, two times in this portion, in this portion of Scripture, Jesus tells us that if we remain in him, the true vine, then you can ask whatever you wish in his name, and it will be given you. Two times. And this is an awesome, blessed promise of God. To abide in a true vine means that we experience answered prayer. I love it when the Lord answers my prayer. Don't you? Come on, folks, don't you? And when we're in the presence of God, we can prevail upon the strong name of the sovereign Jesus Christ and we can ask the unthinkable, the impossible, and the unimaginable to be done with the assurance and confidence that it will be done if it's his will. Now, church, this may mess you up a little bit here today. But, but, but have you ever wondered why there were so many stories in the Bible about hurting people? People who were touched by God through Christ. People who were redeemed. People who were delivered and set free. 
People who did not have nothing and the Lord gave them an abundance of blessings. People who did not have anything to live for, but when the Lord Jesus stepped in and intervened, they became witnesses and vessels for the Lord. You see sick people, you see hurting people, people who couldn't see or walk or talk, people who experienced loss and pain. So many stories of people who were touched by one man that changed their lives. The reason these stories are in the scriptures is to remind us that we serve a God who made it possible for every need to be met. Even during this uncertain and unprecedented time that we are living in, we serve a God who answers prayers. Aren't you glad about that today? See, the key to having our prayers answered is that we must have an honest relationship with them. Here I go again with the relationship. You, 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 you get this here. Get this with me. I, I didn't say have a relationship. I said have an honest, truthful relationship with him. I'm talking about not 99.8%. I'm talking about 100% honest, truthful, genuine relationship with him. John 15 and 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Listen, that's a beautiful promise. <laughs> Some of y'all didn't get that. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. What a beautiful promise. But you know what? In Scripture, every promise has a condition of every promise has, an, or every promise has a requirement. And the requirement of the promise here is that God will give you whatever you ask if you, if you remain or abide in him. Here it goes back. I'm going back to A. Abiding in God. Remaining in him. And I preach how to remain in Christ Jesus, and that's by being obedient to him. By allowing his words to remain in you. And in other words, God says, I, if, if, if we fill our minds with the Bible scriptures, the word of God, then we will be in Christ. We will be living or dwelling in him. See, see, here's one thing, and, here's, and, and I want you to get this in your mind. God requires us that we listen to him. And I'm talking about listening to him first. Before he listens to us. See, some of us are spoiled. We want God to listen. Listen here, God. No, God said, you listen to me first. Uh-oh, I'm, I, y'all got quiet there. You know, if I don't pay attention to what God says to me in his word, why should he pay attention to me when I talk to him? If I ignore his word, why should, I pay atten why should he pay attention to what I have to say to him? See, your prayer life will never be more effective than how you understand the scripture. The more you understand the Bible, the more you'll know how to pray effectively. And the more effectively you know how to pray, the more you will see prayers answered. Amen. Thank God for Jesus, who is the Word of God. And it starts with, again, abiding in the true vine. See, it starts with making sure that there's nothing between you and God. It starts with being in His presence and being in His Word. And let me tell you something else. The final benefit that I have in abiding in the vine is, someone say, eternal life. Say it with me, eternal life. Come on, say it like you mean. Come on, come on, I can't hear you. Someone say eternal life. Folks, that's, a, that's, that's the most awesome promise in the word, eternal life. Every time I see that, I think of myself. I think of eternal life, eternal life. One of these days, folks, we're going to have eternal life. We have it now. We just haven't made the transition up there yet. 
See, we see in John 15 and 2 that the gardener, who is the father, is going to judge those who do not bear spiritual fruit. He's going to prune those branches away. And in verse 6, it says that those branches that are cut away are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned up. You know, some Bible word that supports this one is all we should know. John 3, 16 through 18 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that, he, but th that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And then in Romans 8, 1 through 4, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. See, 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 condemnation is reserved for those people who chose to ignore the Son of God. The people who chose to ignore His commandments. The people who chose not to, here we go again, not to abide in the vine. See, there are only two kinds of people in the world. Those who have everlasting life as a result of their, 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 their faith in Christ and their desire to abide in him. And those who do not believe and do not have an ongoing relationship with the Lord. The Bible says that those people that those people are already sentenced and await only the execution or the finishing of the sentence. Here's where I'm going to end here. You know, there were so many sermons in this passage of Scripture that I could have preached, and I wanted to preach some others too, but the Lord said, no, I'll preach this today. Preach this today. But I wanted to give you a rundown of some benefits of, of abiding in the vine. There are benefits of abiding in the true vine of Jesus Christ. We can bear fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. We have the assurance of answered prayer. And we have the assurance of eternal and everlasting life in heaven. What's some pro what promises that we have? What, what blessings of that is? Do you know some people who are not binding in the true mind? I know you do. I know you do. And I hope each one of you today who's listening, I hope you understand my voice listening today. I hope you're depending upon Christ who is allowing his power and his spirit to flow through you and in you. That means we are abiding in the vine. He is the true vine and we are the branches and I hope all of us are living our lives with the presence of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit within us. Because His presence is in our lives should drive our desire to be more like Him. He wants that ongoing relationship with God through Jesus, and to be the, He wants that to be the most important thing in your life today. He wants that in your life today. Stay abiding in the vine. You know, during this time of our lives, it is vital and necessary for our lives to be connected 
to the vine of life, which is Jesus Christ, our Savior. There's no time like the present during this pandemic time that we should be connected to the vine of life. You know, a branch is good for only one thing, and that's bearing fruit. It may be weak in itself, but it has a living, but if it has a living relationship with the vine, it can be productive. See, to abide in Christ means to be in communication with him so that our lives please him. We know, you know, we know that, 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 we, that we are abiding when the Father prunes us. Anybody ever been pruned before? I have. He prunes us, cutting away the, the good so that we can produce the best. We, we, we you know, we, and, and you know what, and, and right now, we're in a pruning time. I want you all to get that. We are in a pruning time. The Lord is pruning us, you know. He, he, he's doing things to get us ready for the next level. You know why? Because you know what? If we can get through this, we can get through anything else. I want, you see, that's this part of my message today. He, he prunes us. Each and every one of us has been through some things during this pandemic. It has not just affected those who were not in Christ Jesus. It affected us as Christians too. Amen. Some of you have been in a pruning stage. Some of us are still in a pruning stage. And he's doing it to me right now. He's pruning some things. He's getting some things out the way. So when the next thing comes, we're going to be stronger. You know, this pandemic is nothing compared to what's going to happen when tribulation time comes. Oh, y'all better get that to me. This is nothing. In fact, this is a vacation paradise compared to what's going to happen. And guess what? The Lord has not come yet. But he's pruning us today, pruning this world and cutting away the good so we can produce more and the best. And let me tell you, the best is yet to come. We glorify God with fruit, more fruit and much fruit. And if you're under the sound of my voice today, if you're watching today, are you abiding in Christ? Do you have a relationship with our Savior? If you don't, you're missing out on the greatest lifeline we could ever have. You know, when we're connected to the vine, which is Jesus, we are connected to the blessings of life and most of all, eternal life. He says it in here that I just preached about, there's eternal life. And during this time of our lives, we, we, we need a Savior that we can depend on for comfort and peace and guidance. A lot of us, a lot of people need some guidance right now. A lot of people of you, if you're watching, you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to turn to. But I tell you, we have a Savior. We have a Savior, Jesus, you can depend upon for comfort and peace. Because there's a lot of people today, a lot of you who may be watching today, don't have peace in Jesus, don't have peace today. And the Lord wants you to have peace to live. Nobody but Jesus can provide all three of those I just named. He's willing to come into your life. Come into your heart, your mind and soul. The enemy is trying to give you some bad thinking. That's the only way that he can come in and, 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 and befuddle you through your mind. You need the Lord to take over your mind. Let me say that again. You need the Lord to take over your mind. So, 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 why don't you choose to connect with Jesus today? Be part of the vine. He can make the difference. 
Who in this house know that the Lord can make a difference in your life today? Hallelujah. Come on, say, someone say hallelujah this morning. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He can make the difference. He can give you peace in a time of storm, folks. I'm so grateful to that. He can make the difference. So I ask this question to you. Why don't you meet him now? Because you don't want to meet him later. Let him come into your life today. Let him give you renewed peace. Let him give you comfort today. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And if you're watching today, I want you to be honest with yourself. I talked about that honest relationship with him. He, he doesn't accept no 99.9%. .9%. No, he wants a 100% relationship from you. And he wants you to, to come to him and, and, and so he can come into your heart. The song says, come to Jesus, come to Jesus today. He will give you that comfort and peace that you need through this time that of uncertainty, this time of this pandemic and this time of what's going on in our world. He can make your life easier and give you peace. And if you want peace today, it's time for you to say yes to Jesus. I'm going to give you a few seconds. And I want you to think of your heart today. Think of what you're going through. And if you're thinking of it right now, know that other things that you've been trying to do has not been working. Now it's time to try the real source. It's time to put the real source and the real peace into your life. And you won't just get peace and comfort. You're going to get eternal life. And I'm so thankful for that. So if you made your decision today, bow your heads with me. If you made your decision today, bow your heads with me and we're going to pray. And I know you're watching. This goes to you. We're going to pray. Pray that God comes into your life. Say this with me, dear Jesus. And if you're watching today, repeat after me. Say that again, dear Jesus. I thank you for this time in my life. I thank you for this moment I have. Lord, it's just you and me. And I want this to be just between you and me. Please come into my life. Come into my heart. Give me peace. Make me a new creature. Make me a new creation. Give me a new walk. Give me a new talk. Please give me purpose. I ask you, Lord, forgive me of my sins. If I've done anything wrong, please forgive me. If I've done anything wrong in your sight, please forgive me and take everything away. Make me a new person. Make me the right Christian. And follow your word. I will obey your word. And keep it in my life. Forgive me father. Of all my sins. And I thank you. I thank you. That you're going to complete in me. And give me purpose. That I may serve you. I believe that you died on the cross. And that you rose again on the third day. And I proclaim that in my life. I proclaim salvation in my life. I thank you for forgiving me and saving me. I give you honor and praise. Amen. Come on, give God a hand praise today. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus.